Hi guys, thanks for coming. Welcome to Following Jesus with Pastor Addy. So last week I told you a story about how I started my first day of college and I didn't know anybody. But there's a bit more to that story. You see, on the first day that I started college, I was 36 and a half years old. So it's not like I was a young college student looking for like my next stage of life and I was excited by it. No, absolutely not. I had worked for 15 years of my life. I, after I left high school, I didn't go to tertiary education. I just went straight to work in the workforce. I worked my way up in the insurance and finance industry. And um, when I went to, when I was going into college, it wasn't something that I had planned for myself. Um, it was actually a result of a lot of things, a lot of my plans falling apart and falling to pieces. So I remember on the first day that my brother and my sister-in-law dropped me off in my dorm room, I had my backpack on and I refused to take off my backpack because I said to my sister-in-law, I don't want to stay here. This is too much. This is impossible for me. Somebody my age can't be starting their life again. I can't be starting over. I'm not a spring chicken. I'm not 18. I'm not going to know anybody. I'm not going to relate to anybody. And so I sat there with my backpack and I just wouldn't take my backpack off because I didn't think that I would ever be able to stay there and continue on that path that somehow fell into my lap. It was a tough situation. But eventually I did take off my backpack and I unpacked my bags. I, you know, took all my stuff out of my suitcase, the clothes that I brought to wear. And eventually I settled in and things were not as bad as I thought they would be. But the idea of an impossible situation is what we're going to talk about today. I don't know what kind of impossible situations you have in your life, but it was in my stage of life where I was like, this is impossible for somebody my age to start again. My relationship and my marriage that I had worked towards for 10 years fell through. Um, my plan of having a house and a family and everything, all I got out of that was my two dogs and even then one of them died. So all the plans that I had made fell through and I had no choice but to start again. But it just seemed impossible. Now, obviously not everybody you know, can relate to those ex exact situations, but I'm sure that there are a lot of you who can relate to a feeling of seeing something that's so big and it being an impossible situation to overcome. So we're going to look at a boy called Joshua, and we're going to turn to Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. The Bible says, Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. So a little background to what's going on here. Joshua is the second leader of the Israelite people that was, I guess, equipped and called on to take the children of Israel out of Egypt. The first one was Moses. So Moses took the children of Israel out of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness so that they could be transformed in their hearts to look forward to the promised land. Joshua was the appointed second leader after Moses that would take the children of Israel from the wilderness to cross the Jordan into the promised land. So now where we pick up the story is that the children of Israel, Israelites, the children of Israel have crossed the Jordan and the, the obstacle that's separating them and the promised land is the city of Jericho. They needed to get through Jericho to get to their promised land. So this verse is actually saying, now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. So because the, because the people of Jericho had heard about what God was doing for the children of Israel, they feared. They feared the children of Israel and the God that supported them. So when the children of Israel crossed over to the Jordan, the Jerichoans, let's call them that, we're like, guys, we need to do something about this. We need to fortify our city. We need to strengthen. We need to push the wardrobes against the door. You know, like, we can't let them in. We need to, you know, like, I don't know, put all the furniture against the door and everyone stands there and, you know, make sure that the wall, the wall is secure enough so that no one comes in or out. Because back in those days, the only way that somebody could conquer a city 
would to infiltrate the was to infiltrate the wall so they either go through the you know the sewage i don't know you go through the drains and come up and all oh, surprised we're inside the wall like the idea of the trojans remember that story where they had to hide soldiers in a trojan horse and then push them the horse into the city and then from inside the city the trojans could come out and kill everybody so it was the same idea so the city was fortified because the people of jericho the Jer jerichoians were scared of this god that supported and kind of went before the israelites so Joshua is seeing this. He's seeing that the walls of Jericho were secured and fortified. So it was impossible for them to kind of penetrate the wall. There was no way that they could get in the wall. Now the only other way that they could fight and conquer Jericho was if the army came out. But this, the verse also says no one went out and no one came in. So not only could the Israelites not get into Jericho, but no one from Jericho was coming out and saying, okay, we'll fight you. So this was an impossible situation. The fact that no one came in or out meant that there was no human way possible that the Israelites were going to be able to fight and conquer this, this nation. So then the, the next verse is the bit that I find amazing, right? So we'll just recap. Verse 6, chapter 6, verse 1 says, Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites, no one went out and no one came in. Joshua, this is an impossible situation. Okay? That's what that verse says. Then the second verse goes, Then the Lord said to, said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. I don't know. That sounds so weird to me. It's like God is saying, I'm Jericho. Jer Joshua is looking at an impossible situation. And God is like, see, see, I've given them. And if I was Joshua, I'd be like, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Like, this doesn't make any sense. I'm looking at an impossible situation. But God is saying, I have already delivered Jericho into your hands. Now, I don't know. That's a tough call. That's a challenge, right? To look at a situation that you can see with your eyes is impossible. But God says to you, I've already delivered it into your hands. What kind of situations in your life are seemingly impossible that you need to ask for God to do the possible in your life? So I guess what I'm trying to say is there are some situations that we look with our eyes as impossible. But then God is saying, see, I've already delivered it. But we need to claim it. We need to claim it in faith. And the way we do that is in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 and it says now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see so this isn't saying oh yeah you know i'm gonna pray that you know i get skinny overnight and yeah god's gonna do that tomorrow that's not what that's saying what it's saying is that if there's a situation that seems impossible but God has already told you don't worry about it I've got this I've got the victory here we can have so much confidence as though we're seeing the victory but looking at an impossible situation so we're looking at the impossible but in faith we can look and see with God's eyes that he's already given us the victory in that so I don't know are you in a situation like that where you need to maybe see something with the eyes of faith or the eyes of belief, the eyes of confidence in God. I don't know. I know that in my life, when things like that have happened, God has, and I've let God take over. God's definitely shown me that he'd given me the victory already and I just needed to walk in it. So I encourage you today that if there are situations in your life where things seem impossible, that you just give it to God. Give it to God and believe that he will give you victory in it. Again, thank you for tuning in to Following Jesus with Pastor Annie. And stay tuned for another episode. Yeah. I'm a new awesome.